So why do I race? Uh, why do I love motorsports? The, the adrenaline rush, the racing against people, trying to be number one, trying to always be on top of the game. Uh, why do we race? That, that is a really good question. I think that question has been asked more so than I could even think of. Um, the, you know, when you talk about getting on the start line and, and you're at the, the top of your game and you, you want to be there and that adrenaline is just pumping and it's, you're just ready and everything just goes into a blur. Uh, I can tell you I've been on the start line at Dover. People have come up to the car and talked to me and they says, boy, Doug, you never remember when I, what I said. And I says, absolutely not. I had no idea because the heart is just beating at a million miles an hour. The, no, the only thing that I can even figure is that first corner. And uh, that's all that's going through my head and the, the heart is going woo -doo, woo -doo, woo -doo, woo -doo. And uh, you know, that is one of the reasons why I race because you can't really and truly get that anywhere. And it's just one of those things, well, maybe there's one other place you can get it, but <laughs> we won't discuss that on air. <laughs> my name is Doug Hollywood Gore. We are here with uh, Mad March Productions, and I tell you, this guy is at the top of his game right here. So, you know, if anybody ever was to ask me what kind of driver is probably the best in the world, I would probably say a rally driver uh, because they, what they have to go through and what they have to entail. You know, even when you talk about Jam West and Dover, yeah, you have that start line and that massive adrenaline rush, which of course rally doesn't give that. You know, you, you don't get that when rallying. But I can tell you that, you know, when you go at Dover and when you go at Jam West, you already kind of know what you're going to be up against. Yes, you have to think of all the scenarios, but you know what gear you're going to be at that first corner what gear you're going to be down at Spectator's Corner when you go to Pinky's Bluff. You, know, you, you kind of know what you're going to do and, uh, and how fast you need to go. And it, but as far as getting a heart pumping on a, on a longer, all day affair, yeah, rallying is it. I, I really and truly started very late in racing. I didn't start until I was about 27 years old. So that being said, a lot of times when I was a kid, I used to go and watch my father race at Vernon Field. And then I had the, the likes of Colin Whittingham, David Carr, with Robert Gore, uh, um, uh, Uncle Freddie Gore. But the racing part of it, it was one of those things where everybody got together and you're sitting down at the dining room table and everybody's talking about racing. So you, know, you kind of grew up with that, that love in you. So when I first started, as I was telling you before, is that you had the, the Raina Kings and the, you had the Peter Moody's, the Chris Sissers, the the David Sawbells, the Jeffrey Pantons, and I mean, I'm talking from circuit racing to, to rally racing. And uh, you know, these were the rivals that I would always try to beat. And uh, eventually I would definitely say for rallying was Jeffrey Panton. You know, I was always going out there and trying to beat Jeffrey, even though he had the best of the best cars. You know, I really had my evolution and so on, but trying to take him on in his WRC cars. But going out there and just after a while starting to win every one, one on a stage, one on a stage, and then you said to yourself, yeah man, you can do it. And you, you start to gain confidence. So again, you know, you, you're talking about David Sommel with circuit racing, and he was the guy to beat. And you know, David and I actually started out as teammates at Motor Sales, and we were both driving Mitsubishi for a while. So there was a time where we both had very equal vehicles and we could go out there and push each other right to the maximum and see who would come in first. So, you know, we've also had our ups and downs being at the top of the, the crest of motorsports, you know. Yeah, so the lowest point for me would definitely probably have to be last year. Uh, I think the anticipation of what was going to happen with the Kia, uh, sending the car away, uh, finding out that when we actually brought back the car here, it really and truly wasn't finished. Uh, boy, you know, it was a lot of downtime, you know, and then having to go and get the, the guys from OMSC, they, with Mr. Erickson, you know, they came down and at first they actually said no, they weren't even going to come and look at the car. And you know, that was, that was a real low time for me because I'm saying to myself, what do I do now? You know, I have this car and it's sitting here and I really and truly don't know what to do. And then Mr. Erickson said, well, tell you what I'd do is I'd, I'd actually come and look, just to look. 
So I said, Mr. Erickson, if you could even come and even tell me what I can do. Uh, that, that's all I want. And he actually came, took like a million pictures of the car. Uh, I saw him take out the tape measure and doing some tapes and I'm saying to myself, hmm, maybe this guy might actually come and help us. And I can tell you sat down right in this office at the end of the day and he says, Doug, I'm going to help you with this car. So after hearing all what he wanted and he had this plan and this was the plan that he was going to put out and he wrote it down on paper and he says, this is, this is what we're going to do. And I said to him at the end of the day, I says, Mr. Erickson, why are you changing your mind? He said, well, Doug, i tell you something. I've gone to so many places and actually seen pieces of junk. I mean, absolute pieces of junk. You know, it was at that point. He, he then said, no, you actually have a decent car, but you have just so much things around that car that needed to be dealt with. And uh, I do think that we can help you. I do think that we can figure this out and we can actually make it work. So it was at that point that finally I saw a light in the end of this very, very, very dark tunnel. And I said to myself, yeah, this could, this could actually work, you know. Uh, we, could, we could make it work. Yeah, everything works fine. I'm just trying to elaborate with the turbos and buy different turbos with different systems. And yeah. it's getting there. I'm, I'm almost happy. So, so we're trying to, we have the time now. So even if something, even if we break something, we have the time to fix it. You're watching Mad Vision Productions. Please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You're watching Mad Vision Productions. Please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. So we talk about whether my home life affects my racing career and so on. And, and I've been very, very blessed over my entire career. And I've had a family that has always supported me. And that, that's always been a plus. Uh, if anybody has ever gone to Dover and, and been in my stands and, and hear my wife that I just married, Shan, you know, if you ever hear her, and if you ever hear my daughter Sabrina, uh, they're very, very, very vocal when I'm out here on the racetrack. And then I'll have my son come and sit down right beside me at the end of the, the race, and we'll actually talk about the, the last race, and, and then we'll talk about a plan of action for the next one. So it has really and truly been a family affair. I mean, I can't tell a time where I've been to a race and, and any of my family says, well, I'm not going, you know, or, or I don't want to be there. So. Again, I've been very, very blessed, even with my father and, and my other parts of my family. You know, remember Matthew, he's another racer and really looking at that part. Well, I've also been very, very fortunate that in my 25 years, I think, that I've been racing now solid, I don't think that there's ever been a year that you have not seen me race. And of course, that takes its toll, you know, I have a lot of trophies here. You know, the, the 600 plus trophies is, is a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money that has been poured into this thing. And uh, one of the reasons why is that I've had some very, very, very good sponsors throughout the year. You know, Sharon Williams has been there from day one. You know, um, Motor Lubes uh, with those guys there from Amsoil. I mean, my gosh, ATL Automotive. So I've been very, very blessed over the years. I mean, I have never, and I will never tell you that I am the best. There's just no way, because I know that there are guys out there that are better than me. But one thing I can tell you, I never ever give up, and I'm going to race 100% at all times. It's something that I even taught my son. When Tommy goes out there, and we've been racing go-karts since Tommy was five, I've always told Tommy, I said, Tommy, at the end of the day, when I get in the car, and we're driving home, and I can look at him, and I can say, boy, Tommy, I know you gave it your all today. I don't care whether he finished first or last. I just want to know that I saw him in the cart and I saw him trying. You know, the future is actually quite bright. A lot of people have talked about the, the demise of motorsport and, you know, where is it going? And the Doug and David show is over and we don't see Jeffrey rallying here anymore. Uh, but you, you do have this young crop of, of racers, the, the Fraser McConnells, the, the Tommy Gore, the, the Wings, the, the, the Kyle, Greg, you know, you have some newcomers that are just going to just explode on the market and, and I think that we have a, a really good thing coming on and I think we're going to have some very, very, very good stuff really, really, really soon. It's going to be exciting times ahead. What's next for Hollywood? Um, I'm not retiring anytime soon, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I want to do is I want to show everybody that the, the key Audi, uh, 
is definitely a car that can compete, can go there and actually win. And uh, I'm, I'm destined to prove that. I don't care what it is, I'm not going to give up. And I, I think that that is my next step. Uh, as far as rallying is concerned, you know, we bought this little Toyota Corolla that I earned owned many, many years ago. And Tom are going out, Tommy and I are going to go out there and have a little fun with it. And uh, yeah, just to get back a little feel of the dirt and a little sideways action. And yeah, I'm not giving up and I'm, I'm still here. You know, I've, I've said that I've had some of the greatest fans ever. Uh, yeah, I think my fans are fantastic and I really must tell you two thumbs up to, to all of you. Uh, you are what makes Hollywood continue to, to want to be in racing and, and continue to try and thrive at this sport. This is Doug Hollywood Gore, Mad Vision Productions. You guys are number one out there. Mad Vision Productions, Doug Hollywood Gore, match made in heaven. Make sure, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. <laughs>